Hey guys, we're back. This episode we're doing a most wonderful movie, Pixar's Finding Nemo. We decided not to focus on the gorgeous depiction of the coral reef in the beginning of the movie, but instead focus on the ocean current shown midway through the film. You guys should remember it, it's when Marlon and Dory catch a ride on a sea turtle's back and go through a super fast current-like tunnel thing. This is actually called an ocean current and they're quite common. So ocean currents are exactly the way they sound. They are a portion of the ocean that moves similar to a river. What causes an ocean current is different for each one. One. They're quite special that way. In the movie, they depict the Eastern Australian Ocean Current, called the EAC. Essentially, the EAC is generated by wind, specifically the high pressure conditions on the equator and the low pressure conditions at the South Pole. This generates a steady stream of wind between the two parts. This, in turn, causes a mostly steady current of water. So, take a quick note. Ocean and wind currents are part of a huge complicated system that spans the entire globe and is very hard to generalize or simplify. But to sum it all up, the significant temperature difference between the equator and the poles causes a pressure difference which in turn generates a steady airstream which in turn generates the ocean current known as the EAC. So, like every single other natural phenomenon ever, the EAC is indeed affected by climate change. And for those who wish to debate climate change, please do it somewhere else. Go watch the Vlogbrothers video on it and debate it there. This is Climate change is not the focus of this video. However, climate change is changing the EAC a little bit. It's causing it to move more hot water, which in turn means the water around the Antarctic is warmer, which is really less than awesome for that whole ecosystem. If you want a cute animated video covering that, go watch Happy Feet. So in Finding Nemo, the EAC is a tube-like stream of water that acts as a convenient plot device so Marlon and Dory can get to Sydney, Australia within a reasonable amount of time. The EAC does in fact go right past Sydney, so props to Pixar for getting that geographical detail correct. However, ocean currents are more of a tro than a tube. One of the major effects of the EAC is that it moves warm water from the Coral Sea to the Tamsin Sea and transports over 1,000 million cubic feet of water per second. This requires way more volume than a tube the width of a small turtle clan. The actual EAC is a tro that can be about 3,000 feet deep and almost 60 feet wide, which when you think about it, it seems pretty narrow for that huge amount of water. So it is quite fast and it is narrow, but it is neither small or circular. However, let's go to the most important question. Do animals actually use it as a sort of a highway? Yeah, sort of. So, while the low nutrient content in the EAC means no animals are going to live there, ocean currents are often used as for migratory marine animals, like, say, sea turtles. Also, a recent study in the Arctic has proposed that krill use ocean currents to travel towards colder water. They have dubbed this theory the Nemo Hypothesis. Okay, so major props to Pixar for using an actual physical phenomenon for a plot convenience that keeps the story and the characters moving, Literally. Seriously, Pixar, what can't you do? Thanks for watching, and we hope you're enjoying the series, and please, 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 please subscribe. Join us next time for one of the best sci-fi movies ever, Galaxy Quest.